Would you like to live in a paradise? Would you like to be a part of the untouched earth? Imagine the most beautiful place in this world. Imagine you're staying on the cliff and you see the endless ocean. The water is so blue and shimmering. You see the waves crashing. You feel the sun on your skin. At the distance, you see the sea lions that are bathing on the sand. You feel so happy to be there and observe the wildlife. You turn back and you see the most gorgeous flowers. You take a deep breath and you smell the earth. You want to explore this area more. You take a few steps and you see the baby giraffe bounding down the hill. You cannot believe it. You move forward and you see a couple of cuddly little elephants. They're just like human babies. So adorable. You move forward and you see this. Dozens of antelopes and more elephants and the baboons in the tree, all in one place, right in front of you. You are speechless. You want to see more. You're fascinated. But sorry, that's not real. Our imagination is so powerful, and we've just used it to create the entire new utopian world. But this is the reality that we live in. And imagination is not enough to change it. You may ask, why change? Because we don't normally see the dead animals on the streets, do we? I want you to pause for a second and try to remember the recent news that you've heard or read. There are always headlines that shout out some vague terms like global cha uh, climate change or global warming or habitat loss or deforestation. And it's so overwhelming and depressing. And frankly, we don't quite understand what it's all about, because no one explains us properly. And, and we are lost. We don't know what to do about it. We don't know where to start. We don't know where to care. So we tend to ignore it. We do, not, we do nothing because it's easier. We uh, pretend that, it does, that the problem does not exist. Or we admit that the problem exists, but we think that it's far away and it will never get to us. If you still question yourself what to do about it, Let's make it simple. I have a good news for you. We can break it down. We can really make it simple. Let's take a single species, a single problem that exists now. Let's see, at the one of the most unique creatures and on this planet, and see what happens if it disappears. And listen closely, because what I'm about to tell you is very unique. Because most of the people on this planet have never heard of this unique creature. I'm talking about the Saiga antelope. S-A-G-I-A, -A, Saiga. This is the antelope that inhabits Central Asia, namely Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Russia and Mongolia. And this is the area I come from. 
The other name for this antelope is a big-nosed antelope, and I believe the reason is obvious. Just look at this nose. <laughs> so this is the critical endangered antelope. And unfortunately enough, this antelope is being one of those species that are famous for being the most, the fastest declining animals on the planet. In fact, in 15 years, we lost 95% of these incredible animals. And what is 15 years for this species? Let me show you. Saigas used to live at the same time with woolly mammoths during the Ice Age. That began over 2 million years ago. What is 15 years on this scale? Nothing. Can you imagine how ancient this animal is? And it's such a shame that people are the ones to blame for this drastic decline. Saigas are poached with their horns. That among all are used in traditional Chinese medicine. This is the reason driving them to extinction. On top of that, there was a real tragedy last spring. There was a massive die-off that took lives of 65% or two-thirds of the remaining population of the Saigas in the world. And those were babies and females. The disease was caused by pastorella bacteria, and no one could stop it. If you still question yourself, why change? Let's imagine that Saigas are gone, that Saigas are not here anymore. What will happen? Before we move anywhere from here, I want to tell you one crucial thing that everyone should know about the animal kingdom, about the ecosystem. Everything and everyone is related. Let's take a classic example. Let's take a predator and a prey. If the prey disappears, predators have nothing to eat and they starve to death. The same happens with the saigas. That's the first thing that will happen. Wolves are the natural predators of the saiga, so if saigas are not there anymore, the wolves have no food. Of course, they will try to hunt the livestock, but guess what? People will not like it. Local people are dependent on the livestock, and they will shoot the remaining wolves just because they will try to protect their households, their families, their property. That's how we'll lose two species. And this is just a little example. It will trigger, trigger the whole chain of changes in the ecosystem. And we can only guess how it affects the humans. The soil will degrade as well. It will be hard to grow crops. How can you live in such horrible conditions when it's hard to get food? There is another very simple reason. We humans are social beings, and we don't want to be alone. Let's face it. Being the only living creature on the entire planet, is this the thing that we want for our families, our children, ourselves? I don't think so. This is the world that we may live in. Imagine dry lands, no animals. Do you want to be there? I don't. I would like to finish with a personal story. I was born and raised in a family of dedicated biologists that showed me the wildest corners of my country, Uzbekistan, such as this place. It's called Ustert, and that's exactly where Saigas live. It's incredible. And wildlife and nature was ingrained in me, in my own nature. And as I was little, I believed that everyone feels the same. 
But as I grew up, I learned that people have different problems to care about. There are too many issues, they are too busy. Wildlife is not the top of their priorities. And I remember how frustrating it was when people, when your friends come up to you and say something like, why are you doing something for conservation? You're wasting your time when you could just, you know, get the degree or skills in business or medicine that would be much more useful and profitable. Why are you wasting your time? And I was like, no, I'm not wasting my time. That's what I love. But they genuinely couldn't understand why I was doing what I was doing. Neither could I give up on my passion. So I got involved with wildlife conservation, with Psyche Conservation Alliance, and I really wanted to change people's attitudes toward wildlife because it was so totally wrong. So I started working with local people, communities, with children especially, but also with their parents, women, men, exposures. And I loved it. And there are so many great things that we've done for the past four years that I would love to share with you, but I'm not sure that we have time for that now. So I just want to touch upon one of my favorite projects that combines both imagination and action. I'm talking about the mural project that we did in one of the local schools. Basically, that's what happened. We came to the school and we had that big, white, empty wall that we needed to paint over. And that was exciting because I'm a passionate painter myself and, and I was double excited because I needed to do it for wildlife. But most of the people were so skeptical at the beginning because, again, they were like, you're doing painting instead of going out in the field and fighting poachers? That's not right. But I'm so glad we did it. Yeah, in the beginning, there were just a couple of us, me and this fantastic wildlife painter whose name is Rory. And sometimes we had one or two children joining us. But I remember thinking, like, is it all that we're going to get from this? I was a bit disappointed. I expected more. But watch what happened. More and more children were joining us day by day. And <laughs> just after a few days, it was physically hard to paint something because we didn't have a room. And it was amazing. Everyone was so excited. And the best thing about it, that we, we could have that connection, that we could just talk about wildlife and beautiful animals or weird animals or adventures in the wild. And it was amazing because I could see how children are changing. That was the most re re rewarding experience that I had. And, well, after a few days, we ended up with this painting. This is the ideal world for those children, how they see it. And they use their imagination to create it. They not just imagine it, they actually did an action. And they did it, this beautiful painting. This painting is still in that school, and if you go there today and ask any student, any child, why protect endangered species? Why care about wildlife? They will give you a perfect answer. Before, they could hardly name two or three species, two or three animals that lived in that area. On the final note, I want to challenge all of you to take the power of your imagination and start with a simple action. If you don't know how to do it, talk to me and we'll figure it out. Thank you.